Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Matt Bronger. Thank you, guys. Um, this is great. I, before I get started, please do not be intimidated by my celebrity. Please. <laughs> Just don't, okay? I'm gonna call out the elephant in the room. Yes, yes. Okay, we all, I'm sure you've talked about it. I was on the Halloween episode of iCarly in 2007. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's really me. It's actually me. I walk among you. I know. I'll let you touch me later. I'm, I'm just a man, okay? Let's just get that right out of the way, okay? I don't think celebrity exists anymore after all the crap we've been through the last two years. I think it's dead. I don't think it doesn't matter if someone's famous anymore as much. Though, I think we all have that person that if we saw them, we'd be like, mm. it's them. No, look, no, don't look, but look. But don't look, but look. Mm. And I was very surprised to find out my geek out celebrity was Tay Diggs. Do you guys know who that is? Right? I was like, what? I didn't know I was on this guy's jock so much. That's wild. You know, like granted, amazing actor, a beautiful chocolate man, but like, I mean, and I will admit it, I love a hot dude, you know? I do love a hot dude. I'm, I'm glad they're around, you know? They really bring a room together. I like to see a good look. I, to me, it's like looking at a sunset or a horse. Like, I'm not attracted. I'm like, look at him. I'm glad he's here. The party's lit. Like, you ever been at a party and a dude walks in, you're just like, who the fuck is that guy? All right. There he is. Nice. This is awesome. I just like to objectify, you know? And I'm, I'm done doing it with women. I think that is dead. Like, enough of that. <laughs> women have had enough objectification. Let's start objectifying men as straight men. That's what I say. Let's switch it. Why not? I like a beautiful man. And it's fun to do it to their face. Like, I'm married, I'm beyond off the market. I will make a hot dude feel uncomfortable at a party. <laughs> Just walk right up to him like, all right, this is great, I'm digging this, yeah. Yeah, look at you. All right, just stare at a weird part, like his stomach or something. Like, yeah, that's great, I love this. Spin around, let me see the whole package. He's like, I'm not gay, man, neither am I, fucker, what's up? What are we doing later? I don't know, whose friend is this? This is really weird. I'm not into this. Check to find dudes. I don't think it's my fault though, because I grew up in the homoeroticism of 80s action movies. Anybody else? Ridiculous. Every guy was shirtless, cut, and shiny. Everybody. Every Rocky movie. I've seen so many boxing matches, I've never seen them whip out a bucket of baby oil like they did in Rocky. Why did Ivan Drago look like he was made of chrome? Like, it made no sense. Just gleaming, like, so much. Schwarzenegger, Rambo, like, everybody was just veiny, muscular, just steroided out. And, and, and this was a time where I was judged if I said any of my friends was attractive, if they were a man, right? Like, I'd be like, uh, whoa, Zach's good looking, like, Ugh! Everyone freak out. What are you, queer? You want to marry him? I'm, like, I'm not going to marry you, Dennis. You're ugly as fuck. <laughs> if I had to marry a man, I would take Zach. He has gentle eyes. <laughs> Son of a bitch. It's a ridiculous time. Jean-Claude Van Damme doing his crazy splits. It was so, we, all of us guys were like, yeah, I like that. I like his body. I like the way he moves. Queer? What? Like, who cares? But you know what number one was? You're thinking it, I'm thinking it. Roadhouse. Oh, Roadhouse. Sweet Swayze, who just danced his way through every role. Just dancing. Always dancing. Loved Swayze. I miss him every day, man. Roadhouse is the best. Dalton, best cooler in the business. Plus, 
side note, be nice until it's not time to be nice. That should be America's slogan, you guys. <laughs> like, that should be on the flag. Like, one of the stripes should just say that. <laughs> but, like, back to hot dudes, like, he was the hottest. <laughs> he was the hottest. Doing kung fu in the morning, shirtless, right? Right on the lake. But, like, kung fu in the morning, shirtless, sure, but wear some sweatpants. Not these, like, tightest jeans ever. Just can't kick above the waist. It's ridiculous. A huge rodeo belt buckle. Like, that doesn't make for mobility, Swayze. What are you doing? You know? Like, I, I love it so much. I, I have a bit of an ulterior motive uh, telling you this because I am starting a petition, a movement. I want to get every bouncer at every comedy club to dress like Morning Dalton, okay? <laughs> Just all of them, mullet wigs, no shirt, greased, the tightest jeans imaginable, huge belt buckle, and just have them surround the room, just line the walls. Like, as you are filing in, they're just standing there. I just want to see a couple people be like, is this Thunder Down Under? Am I on the wrong night? This feels very strange. Is it gay night? I don't care, but is it? I, none of them will talk to me, guys. You know why I like a hot dude? Yeah, we're still going. You know why? <laughs> it's because I like seeing stuff that I'm not. And whoa, stop, stop yelling, enough, stop. Okay, I'm hot enough. Calm down. This caused that riot I was worried about. Jesus. I'm fine. But like, I'm talking movie star hot. Like that thick hair that they have, you know what I'm talking about? Like that werewolf hair, where it's like a forehead, then just a tree line, <laughs> like this stick. Just a thick moss you can't put your fingers through. That's hot dude hair, you know? I worked with Jake Gyllenhaal in New York once, and I say worked with, we were on the same benefit show that went like four hours long. Um, and he's well put together. Like, he is good looking as hell. I'm not blowing your mind here, you know? I wouldn't let him fuck. He's got those creepy nightcrawler eyes, you know? I wanna look in the mirror and think, eh, not for me. But it was like me, him, and a bunch of bands. And I had to follow him. He did a monologue from this beautiful two-man play he was in that was running on Broadway at the time. And I remember sitting there and going, man, this guy's really talented. And they're like, you're next. And I'm like, why? Why, why am I after that? You know, what a beautiful monologue. And now, dick jokes Magoo. And coming up. <laughs> So I was like, let me just call this out and make fun of it. So I just, you know, went out there after him and was just like, give it up for my twin, Jake. And they laughed so hard, it hurt my feelings. <laughs> like, it killed so hard. People were crying, like, oh my god! <laughs> he said he's his twin. <laughs> I think I'm gonna shit. We should go. It's like, fuck you guys. I'm not a monster. <laughs> but he has that hair. Like, if you try to run your fingers through it, you get caught, you know? You know what it is? The barometer? Pomade. Pomade. It's any dude that can use pomade, you know? You guys know pomade? You can put it on your head and an engine. Like, same thing. <laughs> that, mm, just a, uh, like a greaser. Elvis or Morrissey or Fabian. Just do a big wave Dave. Never, could never, ever, ever do that. My hair has always been thin and curly. If I ever use pomade, pubes, right away. <laughs> Just a handful of pubic hair. Ugh, may I have this dance? I'm a testicle with eyes. Would you, why are you running, please? Not a good look, ladies, not the best. Though you know what? I'm married, but like, if I was single, I would do it. I would pube up. I would. <laughs> you know, obviously subliminal as a message, you know, because as we all know, I'd say the obvious, women love balls. They love them. <laughs> they love testicles and scrotums. They love them. And that's nice, you know. But it's weird, because they lust after them, like them just by themselves. <laughs> it doesn't make me feel great, you know to have a, a part of my body. Like, I mean, every guy here has been around a bunch of drunk women and they don't know that he's there, they don't care, and they're just like, ugh, just wanna get some sack tonight. Ugh. Wanna get some sweet ball bag. Just, 
want to fuck a guy and grab his nuts. <laughs> Take it, bitch. You know, like, come on. Stop. You know, your magazines, ball bag quarterly, and heavy hangers, you know? And women are like, are they real? Like, that's how bad it is. I thankfully was born with big round nuts, but like there's guys who get implants because they feel lesser because you ladies like them big and round. You know? And look, I don't want to get serious. I didn't think I would get off on a soapbox here, but every man in this room was in high school at one point, right? And you know, you developed, your balls got big, and then all of a sudden women notice you, you know? <laughs> and start talking to you, and they want to hang out. And then a girl is like, do you want to, you know, go on a date? And you're like, totally. And you, you think she likes you for you. And <laughs> you're making out in the car, you know? And she won't stop trying to touch your balls. <laughs> like, stop, stop. No, I'm not ready. Lisa, please, stop. Not even over the denim. Stop it. Lisa, stop. I don't know you that well. Stop. I said no. You just grab her by the wrist, like, damn it, are you my girlfriend? Hmm? Are you my girlfriend? No? No? Then don't touch my fucking balls! <laughs> Drive me home! <laughs> Chicks are pigs, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to call it out. <laughs> I really took that one really far. That was fun. I appreciate you guys for rolling with it. Thank you. <laughs> so dumb. Obviously, you know what I'm talking about. I am certainly not talking about balls. It's very fun to watch your faces going, the hell, does he really <laughs> believe? Oh, he's talking about, okay, right, I get it. Mm, switcheroo, okay, yeah, you know. And I love to push that one, and I'll tell you why. Before the pandemic, I'd done that joke like five times. It was one of those dumb ones that I like doing because it's just stupid and every comic has a stupid joke they love to just trot out and that one's fun for me to do, you know. But I did it five times, five times before the lockdown. And all five times, all five, I never said this part explaining the metaphor or why I like the joke. I would just drop it and move on and leave people confused, you know. <laughs> Five times out of five, I went to the lobby to take pictures of people who came or whatnot. Five times out of five, a dude came up to me and was like, dude, good set, but uh, what's that shit about balls? Chicks hate nuts. <laughs> You're the best man I've ever known. I love you so much, dude. You're such a dumb piece. Oh, never change. Like I gave this guy an irrational hope. Women hate balls, like hate them. I'll get out of the shower, my wife will be like, would you wash your balls? Like, I just wa just now, I washed. <laughs> Did you just say that, because you hate them? What is this? There's a part of us, besides our egos, women could wish away, it'd be balls, you know? <laughs> I just love that that guy was just like, where is this woman? Damn it. <laughs> Where's that woman that lusts for my nuts? <laughs> Somewhere out there. Beneath the pale moonlight. <laughs> Where are you? Okay, I've talked about big penises, testicles. What next? Oh, I have a daughter. She's one. Um, work on my transitions a little bit. Yeah, we had a baby during the pandemic, and um, that was the best thing we ever did. I got nothing bad to say about that, especially because my, my job went away, you know? All the penis joke emporiums closed down. And <laughs> I became a, a stay-at-home dad, and it was great, and it is great, but like, I, oh, thank you. I, <laughs> I, I, will, I will say, it, it spoils you, because I missed the crowds, but God, Damn, if like a baby isn't the best audience ever. Like nothing you do is wrong. They're impressed by everything. <laughs> They're just like, you have keys to jingle in front of my face and you know exactly where the Cheerios are? Here are the tits, dad. <laughs> a king, you know? It's the absolute best. You know, and we went to uh, drive to Oregon where I grew up to show the baby off right on, show the baby off to my parents. They live in Portland. And then, I don't know if you heard, but uh, Oregon caught fire at that point, just the whole state. 
And so we're like, oh, let's stay put. And then California got jealous and it caught fire too. And so we lost our minds. I think a lot of us did that during the lockdown. And we drove 3,338 miles, I think, to Boston, Massachusetts from Los Angeles with a six week old, just like weird pioneers in an electric car going across the country. <laughs> And it was a great thing to do. I'm proud of us. Uh, I can't believe we made it. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> like two weeks ago, I was sitting on my porch with my one-year-old, and I remembered I live in a cul-de-sac that echoes, and I went, Jesus, fuck! Like I just screamed it. <laughs> my baby got startled. Because it just hit me. I like, I did, what the, what? What? It's nuts, you know? But we, we met every kind of person. And it was enlightening and enriching because I met people I would diametrically disagree with online, but face to face, we got along fine because we were all going through this big thing together. I think the problem is maybe the internet. I don't know. I don't know. There could be someone making money off us. Just throwing that out there. I don't know if that's true. No. But I definitely had prejudices. I definitely had stuff that I looked at, it was like, oh, this person is that, and this person is that. I'll never do that again, man, you know? No matter what, because I had, I had the most, like, assumption-shattering experience when we were driving, going through Nebraska, and Rose had a blowout, and it was like a blowout, like someone put five M80s in a towel. Like, <laughs> like it just sounded muffled, like in the old World War II movie where the guy's like, grenade, lands on the, <laughs> like it was like that. It was insane how loud it was, but my, and I look back and she's like, oh, oh, the evil is loose. Like her face looked so relaxed and happy. And it was my turn. Like my wife's like, your turn. And the stench filled the car like, oh, oh God. <laughs> we pull over and I, I take her out and I look and the closest business is a place called Thunder Road, which is a biker bar slash family restaurant. That's actually a thing. <laughs> Just motorcycles, hogs, as far as the eye can see. Every third guy has a leather cut, a vest on with his club on the back, and his MC. And we were going into the restaurant, me and Rose, and we passed the restaurant. I'm like, where's the restroom? And of course, they're like, it's in the bar. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> like, I'm changing a baby. I did a stutter, I said the bar. And so we went through the bar, and there were as many kids in there as there were in the family restaurant. <laughs> and I get into the men's room, and I make my assumption, my first assumption, which was, no way they got a changing table in here. Nah, it's gonna be my wife's turn. No way. Wrong. Thunder Road woke as fuck. Like, their changing table, you could have a horse give birth sideways on that thing. Just could go, bah, like, oh my God. I could sleep on this in the fetal position. This is incredible. Put my diaper bag here, some snacks, couple beers, a baby in the middle. This is incredible. I'm sure that's why it was designed that way, you know? And I'm changing her and she's cleaned up and I'm about to put the fresh diaper on and a biker passes me, who looks straight out of whatever the Norse god hell is. Like, <laughs> wherever the evil Vikings go. Like, he had this giant, like, rivulet-covered beard and this grease-heavy, like, he had that, if Jake Gyllenhaal grew his hair out long, that shit that looks like a helmet, right? Like, he had the tree line, but just grease and evil just melded in there. His eyes were somehow not brown or blue, but red, like red <laughs> pupils somehow. Not high, like just eyes of fire. And a leather cut that he looked like he was born in and grew into, like it was part of his musculature. <laughs> Buck knife. And he's walking out and he stops and he looks right at Rose's vagina. Pause for laughter, nothing? That usually kills. <laughs> yeah, real awkward. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, Mm, mentally, I'm like, go away. Like, I would ordinarily never take you on, but I will pull this hairdryer out of the wall. Like, I've done it before. The little, right? You just put your foot up, yank. They're tiny screws. I've done it when I was hammered as shit in Chicago. And then hit him in the face, sit on him, put it through his head, grab my baby with bloody hands, run her out to my California-plated electric vehicle, and get chain whipped to death by the rest of the motorcyclists, I'm sure. That's my brilliant plan, everybody. So, I, uh, 
I'm sitting there, worried, and then he goes, yeah, that's a rash. <laughs> what? He's like, I don't want to make things weird. <laughs> like, we're so there. You made it weird 50 seconds ago when you were staring. He's like, I don't want to make it weird, but uh, I got four of those, and that's a rash. I got four of those? You mean kids? <laughs> those things? Yeah, two I won in a card game, one I got a garage sale. <laughs> one me and my old lady made natural, and I've seen my share of a diaper rash, brother. That's a rash. And then he blew my mind completely when he unsnaps his blood-caked leather vest and is like, you got the cream? And I pull out the same tube of diaper cream. And I'm like, got it right here, brother. And he's like, right on, brother. Stay strapped. And he walks out. Oh, my God. Oh. I, I, I still wake up in the middle of the night to this day and go, he had the cream. And I go back to sleep, <laughs> peacefully. Right next to his buck knife, amazing. Who <laughs> are, what's your gang? Hell's Dads? Who are you guys? It's magnificent. Oh. <laughs> I am an old dad, I'm 47, and, uh, but I don't care, you know? Doesn't make a difference to me, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure in Tennessee, I'm a grandpa, for sure. <laughs> you know? That's fine, that's fine. I take my baby out, they're like, oh, how old is your son that had that kid? That's your daughter? That's your, Jesus, you know? <laughs> but I don't care, especially because I live in Los Angeles where I am not an old dad. I've been in the park next to a dude watching what I think is his great, great, great grandchild. Dude's like 80 on his seventh marriage to a 24 year old and he's like, she demanded we make one of our own. I can't chase it, I'll give you $500, my back. But I spent a year with her, just me and her, taking care of her. When, the, when all, the, all, the, all the comedy clubs were closed, I had Rose and just took care of her. So when it was time to take her to daycare, you know, we decided after a year she goes to daycare, I was a wreck. Like, we were, I was driving her over there with my wife and I was like, well, this is the day, Rose, you get to meet, meet some friends and um, it's gonna be great. You can, <laughs> my wife was like, are you, like, are, no, are you like, not like, are you okay? Oh, like, no, are you, are you all right? Are you gonna have a breakdown right now in front of our baby? Like, nope, nope, not till we leave. And we go, and I was so dramatic, I handed her off like one of those movies where there's like a soldier going to war. <laughs> She'll have a better life with you. <laughs> and this tiny Latina's like, okay, bye-bye. Just goes through the door, like nothing. Just tuck her away, and the door to shut, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> ah! Went away and sobbed, like so sad. It, I mean, it's, I will say I'm lucky to be a dad because people see you alone with a kid and they immediately help you. Like I went and flew alone with Rose uh, once to New York from LA and everyone's like, where's your wife? Uh, oh, she, she's just me and Rose. You guys, you're alone with her? <laughs> Come here. Do you need to pee? I'll hold her, you okay? You're not drinking, just coffee, okay, good. All right, we're here, if you need any, like they think you're just gonna like stuff the baby underneath the seat in front of you or something. <laughs> you're, you're totally useless. And like I'm, I'm you know, uh, 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 like in love with being a dad and I have a wife who's kind of a pirate, you know? Like I'm trying not to curse in the car anymore. I'm trying not to car curse anymore. I'm just, you know, when you're driving, you're like, look at this fucker. God damn it, out of the way. Fuck him and kill you. God damn it. Like I get virulent and I need to stop. I got a real anger problem. And she's in the back soaking it up like, this is good, this is good stuff. <laughs> just sponging it all in. And my wife is all over me. She's like, stop cursing in the, like, I don't want her first word to be motherfucker. I really don't, <laughs> you know? And she's got a great point, but she says savage stuff around this baby. You know, and doesn't realize it. Like once I was shirtless holding our child when she was still breastfeeding and she went for my nipple. And I was like, whoa, whoa, nope, <laughs> wrong parent. No milk comes out of this one. And my wife walks up and goes, just jizz. What the fuck? It's a baby. I'm holding a child. <laughs> it's hilarious. But talk about a terrible thing. Jizz comes out of my dad. <laughs> We're gonna send you home. 
She says stuff I would never say. My baby wakes up in the middle of the night crying. Kara just goes, ugh, this bitch. Like, come on. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, I'm an old dad, you know, got married late, got married in my early 40s. Thought that was perfect time for my maturity level, honestly. You know, I don't, I don't judge. I think people get married any age, any, you know, young or old, but look, if you get married young, have, I think men get married any age you want, but have your bachelor party in your 40s. Please, for the love of God. Because there's nothing sadder than a group of 22-year-olds that have one credit card that is like one of their dads or something. Like trying to get in a strip club and just like, I have one, one, one to tip, this is great. Like, you guys need to go home and play Xbox, like seriously, you know? Because you got money when you're in your 40s, if you lived right, you know? I went to Temecula, wine country, mom wine country. <laughs> with a bunch of dudes, 10 or 12 dudes, and we had t-shirts that had my wife's face on them, like a glamor shot, right? With the word Kara in cursive, like thug life across our stomachs. We're walking around partying. It was us some bachelorette parties and they'd adopt us, like they loved us. And then one woman got it totally wrong. She's like, oh my God, that's so cool. Did she die? Huh? No. I Actually, yes, uh, we dated her. All of us dated her. She was our lover. And um, she died suddenly uh, in a horrible motorcycle accident. And um, we decided to party. Cheers. I, I, did, I didn't even make fun of her. I was like, no, I'm going to marry her. She's like, oh, good. And walks away. That was it. I loved her confidence. It was fantastic. But like, we had a nice Airbnb. We had like, all these great wineries to go to, every folk singer just out there plucking tunes, you know? Little John Denver or Gordon Lightfoot. That's nice. We started getting hammered, balling up hundreds, throwing them at them, being like, learn Metallica. Learn Bob Seger. Learn Iron Maiden. Screw it. Learn Drake. Just seeing how far they'd go. Doom, do, do, do. Exit life. It was fantastic, man. I love being married. I know that's weird to hear from a male comedian, you know? We're always just like, uh, I'm married, brr. Like you failed? Like, oh no, you found someone to love you? You gross, fat sack of trash? That's a failure, really? Were you gonna be surfing the seas of pussy at some point? <laughs> You creep. I don't think that was going to happen. I think she saved you from hell. I think that's what happened. When people talk about, like, the best things about marriage and the worst things about marriage, that's it. Never the in-between. They talk about the worst, which is what? You'll, you'll fall out of love with each other or you're stuck with the same lover your whole life, you know? Oh, no. Or, you know, the best, which is you have someone who loves you for the things you hate about yourself. That's amazing. And you have a best friend that you fuck, that's cool, you know? That's a good thing, that's a good thing. But we don't talk about the awesome little things in between. Like you have someone to mess with the rest of your life. And to get rid of you, they have to involve the law. <laughs> You're trapped. And I'm not saying do it all the time. Don't, you know, be abusive or shitty, but every once in a while, do a little razz, right? Here's a free one. Did you guys know that if you're in public and you're holding hands with someone and you say some complete insanity, they're a part of that insanity now? <laughs> they're on Team Insane. People look at them, they're like, you have sex with this man? <laughs> you're with him? This is you together, really? Wow, you know? I was holding the hands of my wife walking into an L.L. Bean in Maine. Like literally the nicest store you've ever even seen or heard of. And this lovely elderly female clerk comes up and is like, can I help you find something? And I was like holding my wife's hand. I go, yes, uh, where are your lover's sex kayaks? So you face each other and your chakras mix and every time you hit the rapids, they explode an orgasm and you can hold it up to two hours. We're looking for a third, come back. My wife's like, let go of my fucking hand! I hate you so much. God damn it.
If you got the right person, they'll make you love stuff you never loved, you know? Like, I used to hate Las Vegas. As I used to play there a lot, and I would like just play for like crap money, and I'd eat in the cafeteria. Oh, casino cafeterias where the workers eat. Mm. It's like the Irish level in the Titanic, but not fun. It's real bad. And my wife loves Vegas, because she, she basically pointed out, she's like, look, we're doing better now. We can spend money on things. You're getting better gigs. The thing I love about Vegas is everyone goes. You see every kind of person from all over the world all hanging out, right, being idiot adults, like looking across the room and being like, you being a shitbird? I am being a shitbird, are you? <laughs> High five, here we are, just for two days. Then it's back to the kids, all right, wink. <laughs> There's something for everyone in that town. Um, you learn stuff about yourself. I learned I like watching young people get wasted, you know? Not like a creep, not like, that one's almost ready, start the van. <laughs> not like that. Get the zip ties, he's about to pass out. Not like that. No, just like, I feel like a retired professional athlete, you know? So when I was younger, I used to get blown out. I had a Herculean tolerance and I used it and abused it. I still drink, I still get it on, but not like I used to, because I'm old now. But I like watching someone with the metabolism of a jungle cat go nuts. <laughs> it's fun. I saw a dude in Vegas, true story, tell a story to his friends, vomit suddenly without his knowledge on himself in the middle of said story and laugh it off. Oh, it was amazing. He's just like, man, last night was crazy. Woke up in this weird chick's hotel room. I don't know what the hotel was. I was missing my shoes. <laughs> Where were you guys? Cause I, <laughs> look what happened to me. Look what happened to me. As if someone else barfed on this guy. It was amazing. If I threw up on myself suddenly because of alcohol, I would weep, change my shirt, and go to AA. I would walk right into an AA meeting. It's time for a change. Not this guy. This guy just went, holy shit, should I get another shirt? The whole casino goes, yeah, man. Jesus, there's no other option. The people watching on that level in Vegas is insane. Like my wife and I were inside an air conditioned bar that had a glass wall overlooking one of those daytime party pools with like pit bull music blaring everywhere and foam. Everyone's out there just doosh, 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 doosh. I think it's called rehab or something or detox, ironically. So everyone's getting faded. And that day it was 115 degrees. It was a record heat wave that weekend. And I'm watching people almost just break down. Like all the women are laying under whatever shaded surfaces there are, cause they're the more, you know, evolved of the species, let's be honest. <laughs> but the guys are just like walking in the heat of God's wrath. Like this ain't shit, I'm fine. And hitting on women. Eventually the women start going, I'm, this is, I'm done. This is awful. I'm going inside. I'm going to catch fire. This sucks. I'm so sweaty. I hate it. And they go in, but the guys who are still out there with their flame tattoos and their affliction tank tops still hitting on women. Oh, they were so fun to watch because they were all yoked and muscular and butch and manly, but they kept being like almost pulled to the ground by science and heat. It was like watching the movie Terminator 2 when the T-1000's coming at the guy and he's machine gunning him and he's just breaking up but still won't stop. <laughs> Joints giving out, still getting up again and again. I saw this bro just go up to this woman's like, hey, couldn't help but notice you. Listen, my name's Chad. <clears throat> oh, and I uh, just, I think you're hot. I think, you know, I'd like to be a little forward, think maybe you want to get a drink. <laughs> no! So what do you say? Everyone in the bar is like, stay down, you're gonna die. Get him some water. So my wife and I are like, enough, I don't wanna watch someone pass out. Let's go get changed, let's get into our evening finery. And that's the best thing about Vegas is you have your daytime outfit, get day drunk, then you can take a shower and put on your finery. 
still day drunk, and get night drunk. It's fun. <laughs> so my wife and I, we go up to the room, and we have efficient marital sex. <laughs> Not to brag. Not to brag. But, um, yeah, it happens. It happens. <laughs> to me. And... Anyone who's married knows how it is. You know, people knock it, but it is good and it's reliable. You know what each other wants. You know how long it should last, right? You get the job done. It's like, what do we got? We got some time. Do you wanna? Oh. Yeah, okay. All right, cool. Come here. Ah, okay, cool. That was awesome. Good game. High five. That was great. Like that little thing you did where he punched me in the back. I didn't see that coming. Well, he knocked it out. Good job. I'm gonna get in the shower. Leave the water on, or, yeah? Okay. I used to work in bars. Worked in bars for six years. I lived in Chicago. Um, great town, right on, great town. Full of wild pirates, like yourself, man. Um, respect, concrete respect to you. It was great, but, um, you know, I, I started as a bar back, which, there's, it's a special kind of hell. I will say something, not to get political on you, but I think my strongest political uh, belief is I just don't trust anyone who's never worked a job where they thought about killing themselves at least once. Like, at least once. Like, once. You're just like, this could all end, and I can end it right now. I'm not even clinically depressed right now, but what if? What if I just killed myself, you know? That thing where you're like, God damn it, I got five hours left in this shift. Or. <laughs> Swallow 25 aspirin, I don't know. Mm, whatever it take. When you're bar backing, all you're doing is washing glasses and putting them away. Just stack them, put them away. And there's two or three bartenders that are slammed and you're not allowed to make drinks. And there's beers and ice in front of you and taps and liquor bottles behind you. And people are just like, just get me a drink. Just pour some whiskey in a cup. It's right there. There's a beer right there. God damn it. You're like, I can't. Please stop yelling at me. I'm not allowed. I'll be fired. Please, sir. What are you, a stupid monkey? You're just like, God damn it. I remember looking down at a stirring fork and being like, all it would take is just, just two right there. Just right there and just bleed out in front of this dickhead, looking at him, sit on the stool and be like, you did this! And just break all his drinks in half with my face and slide down the bar. Clean this up! Just die right there, staring at him, still dying, shitting all behind the bar. You're cleaning this up, sir. You are. I don't know what you said. It crosses the mind, you know? Absolutely. But I think those jobs hone you and make you into the person you're supposed to be. If you've never worked a crap job, you know, that's bad because you're not your, your truest self, you know? I think it's like MMA or something, right? It kind of makes you, you know, tough in your own way and find the real you. Like, I was always a funny person growing up, you know? I was always class clown and stuff, but I would get accidentally hilarious when I was a bartender, when I was slammed, and I, stuff would just come out of me, you know, that would kill. And I'd be like, I was just being serious. What, that was funny? Like, I remember being so busy, in the weeds, as we call it in the industry, the folks here know, I uh, lost my sight. Like, I don't know if it was sweat in my eyes, I don't know if I was dehydrated, but my eyesight went blurry, and all I saw were colors and shapes. That's it. And I'm just pushing drinks out and hoping I'm making the right change and feeling credit cards like Braille to see who it is. You know, it was awful. And then some dick somewhere in front of me goes, fuck, am I invisible? And I said sincerely, who said that? And the whole bar cracked up. And I'm like, yeah, throw him out. And they did. The guy's like, hey! <laughs> threw him out the door. I am Caligula. <laughs> People would get away with crazy stuff in Chicago. Like, there was a bar called Coconut Joe's, a beach bar, nowhere near a beach. 
And there were th like a thatched roof and tiki drinks and all that stuff. And they had this amazing, fun, and super safe thing they'd do where they'd just take a bottle of 151 and pour it all over the bar, splashing. Not in just a nice line, just everywhere. <laughs> light a match, <laughs> just light the whole bar on fire. And you're like, oh, yay, arson! What a good time. And they'd never warn you. Like, that's how piratey it was. And one night, <sighs> there's a dude laying back against the bar like this in a tank top and he had the most back shoulder and arm hair I've ever seen in my life like thick like a wookie or a mammoth so much hair like that thickness where if you took a baseball and set it on it it wouldn't sink it would just lay on the green right there and he's just laying there and sure enough this dude's pouring the rum and I'm like oh like I see it about to happen but my throat seized up because I was so afraid. <laughs> whole thing went on fire and so did this dude. Like, <laughs> whole back and shoulders just <laughs> And we threw a jacket on him. Thank God Chicago's always cold. There's always a pile of jackets. We grabbed two jackets and just covered them, <laughs> right? Put them out. And I learned something horrible about myself, which is if I see someone catch fire, the first thing I do or say is not, oh no, let's help him. We should put him out. That guy's on fire, right? The first reaction that comes out of me instinctively is, <laughs> wow, oh no, oh, is he all right? I just thought, I didn't know back hair caught that fast. Are you pouring VO5 Sassoon all over yourself there, sir? <laughs> Chicago's great, but it's also just wrong. Bars are open till 5 a.m., five? That's kind of a crime against God. Even as a 24-year-old, I'm like, we made it. I don't want to be here. Like, I'm tired. And you sit there and you drink till five, and if you know the bartender, it's almost worse because he or she will be like, last call, not you, you stay. Cool. Right? And then you stick around and they lock the door when everyone's gone and you drink some more. And there's no better way to feel like an absolute pile of trash than by walking out of a dark, windowless bar, cartoon sailor drunk, into a bright, sunshiny, fully grown day. Like a zombie, like, oh no. Is it sun time already? Is that a term? Oh, how is everyone? You're jogging? Welcome, okay. What a lovely dog and baby. Oh, oh, is this the line for brunch? Go to bed, sir, my God. You're sweating booze. You're like such a pile of shit. But I love the stuff I've seen in bars. I think uh, women need to start acting up in bars the way men have for millennia, you know? And you might not know what I mean, a lady, you're like, raise your fist, like, right on, brother, but like, you know, you might think I'm, I mean being loud or hitting on men. No, there's a power you might not know you have, which is you can take men's drinks away from them and drink them yourself. Because no one will believe the man that that was his drink first. I know that because I was in DC and a woman took my whole beer, took my whole beer away. I was sitting there in this place called The Big Hunt, which is uh, underneath a bar, it's a comedy club, and I'm up there with my notepad, putting my little set together for them to say tonight to the people, and I got a full beer, I haven't touched it yet, and this 22-year-old woman in a cotton sundress just swoops in and picks it up and just stares at me. <laughs> and I turn around, I'm like, Who, who's with this girl? And there's three bikers behind me, and they're like, mm, -mm. like I want, no part of this. I don't know who that is. She's on her own. And she's just staring at me like, really, what the fuck are you gonna do? Like, if I say this is my beer, you know this is my beer. I'm like, come on. Just took it, stare it, because I realize I'm doing the math. If I snatch it, I look insane, right? Like I just stole some girl's beer, like mine, like a fucking psycho Viking or something. What do I, grab her? No, I'll go to jail. And she knows this, she's just daring me. And my manhood is just gone. Like if it was a guy, I'd be like, hey fucker, it's mine, the hell, or whatever butch thing I'm supposed to do there, you know? 
But because it was a woman, all that came out of me was, hey, that's mine. Like, that's all that came out of my face. Like, so pathetic. Give it. Mom! So lame. And she stared me in the face and just drank it, like, looking at me. Like a bigger guy in prison just eating my food in front of me. I've never felt smaller. And then she sat on me. Like, not in a sexy way, but just like, you're a stool. Fuck off. Just sat. And I'm like, get off me. Like, I pushed her. I took a little of my power back. And she just looks at me and just goes, Ugh. like, I'm no fun. And then she went down the bar and drank three more dudes' beers. And it was worth losing mine to watch them lose theirs. Straight up and down, man. If I would have gone in that bar and they're like, all right, here's the deal. You're going to buy a beer. You don't get to drink it. She does. I'd be like, I'm going to leave. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Get to watch her steal three other guys' beers for that fee. I'd be like, I will buy this chick a keg. That sounds fantastic. Where do I sit? Why stop at three? Have her steal 12 beers. Let's go. Guy next to me, who first guy she took at the three, way more evolved than me. Like, he knew the situation. He did the math better than I did. She grabbed it. He's like, hey, what the fuck? Shit. Another beer? Like, he just knew. That's gone. There's no winning this situation. It's over, you know? It's amazing. She just drank it next to him, and he just looked away. Like, and she put the empty glass down and went to the next guy. The next guy was my favorite because he had been hitting on anything with a pulse all night. One of those guys who's like, you hit on 100 women, 99 say no, but that one. Yeah, but you've annoyed 99 women and the whole bar. Just jack off in your car before you come in, sir. Get the poison out of you. Be a human being. It's exhausting to be around you. I can't imagine what it's like for women, you know? And she comes up, and I, it, there were people in between us, so I didn't even see it. So I'll just do the audiobook version, OK? Here it is. Oh, hi. <laughs> That's mine. Uh, whoa. Wow. <laughs> Thirsty, huh? My kind of gal. Let me get you another one. Hey, where are you going? <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> that what the fuck, man, he said to himself was so good. His self-hatred just spilled out of him like an ooze, like a poison. What the fuck, man? Why does no one like me? Because you're obnoxious, bro. The last guy was kind of sad. He was an old rummy named Dennis. He looked like the Gordon's Fisherman. And I knew he was a rummy because the bartender put it down and went, last one, Dennis. Like, that's a bad sign. If the bartender knows your name and says, last one. Rethink your life choices, Dennis. So the bartender's like, last one, Dennis. And Dennis looks at his beer, looks outside ready to drink it, distracted by something. She swoops in, drinks his whole beer, puts an empty, pristine glass down, and flies away on the wind. And she, he just looks back and goes, hey! Like, to this day, he probably tells everyone he meets in that bar that a ghost took his beer. <laughs> Was a night just like tonight. A ghost in a cotton sundress swept in and took my beer. Like, Dennis, you're an alcoholic. You drank it and forgot. Shut up, dude. <laughs> I really love Nashville, you know? Not to quote the Bible, but I'm not just licking your dicks and clits. I mean it. <laughs> That's Book of Matthew. That guy was a freak. Um, but I like, I like that this town is, is very gay. I really dig that. Got a lot of cool gay spaces. You know, big gay populace in town. And I, I see a few fellow allies, you know. And, I, and that's cool. And I, I feel like I've always had every kind of friend, you know, like different colors, uh, different creeds. I don't know what a creed is, but we had all kinds. And, <laughs> you know, people that have different sexual proclivities. You know, I, I, I've been, I've prided myself, uh, like, not judging and having all kinds of people in my life, gay friends, non-binary friends. And that's cool. But, <sighs> I just have seen this too often that I feel like I have to make a PSA to my fellow allies. Please um, stop asking what a gay couple does in the sack to their face, please. I know, you probably think, when does that happen? I've seen it, and it's always a dude who looks similar to me, and he's faded, and he means well, but he just walks up to a gay couple, and he's like, hey, sorry to bother you, but um, this is awesome. 
You guys rock. Uh, fully support you. It's great. But uh, listen, uh, can I ask you guys? Just curious. Like, who's the one that? Which one? Just curious. Who's the? No. Just let it be a magical mystery. You know what I mean? Or watch a movie. There's plenty of them. You know. My point is, why is it never the other way, you know? I've never had a gay guy just walk up and be like, how do you fuck your wife? What do you do? What do you guys, how does it work? Who does what? Who does what to who? Who's the thing that's this and the thing that's this? What exactly happens? Play by play it for me. You want a drink? Sorry to bother you. Support you as a straight man, you know? Never. And uh, people think gay sex is disgusting. Some people, nope, it's not. All sex is disgusting. All of it. There's no exception. It's awful looking. Like, have you ever had a moment of actual clarity while having sex? And you're like, the fuck am I doing right now? I look terrible. Why is there a mirror on that closet door? Oh, no. Ugh. When did I grow a mole there? It's so gross. That's why it's great. You, it feels so good. You just do this awful thing, you know? And like straight guys are grossed out by gay sex and that's why they ask, you know? And gay persons never ask me how I have straight sex, you know? And ironically, if they ever did, they might be disturbed. <laughs> My wife has done horrible things to me, ma'am. <laughs> Brutal things. Look, she just did a normal thing that everyone in this room has probably done, and I've done at some point, you know? Just did it early. It was like our second or third time doing it. We were cartoon sailor hammered and, you know, going at it. That's fun. Drunk sex, you can barely feel, you know? It's, it's more emotion than physicality. That's neat, you know? But uh, she did a thing we've all done, which is you, you think, this is going great. I feel good, they feel good. Maybe they like a finger in the bung, right? Maybe just a, just a touch, just check in, you know? But you gotta finesse it. Gotta go, hey, just checking in. Is this something you might like, right? Do, 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 do. Maybe you'd like a finger in your butthole, right? Play that one hold flute. See if they want to dance that tune, right? They might be like, I like this jam. You know, they might, you know. You gotta knock, knock, knock on heaven's door. That's my point. That's what that song's about. Take it from me. I'm friends with Bob Dylan. My point is you can't just like a maniac savage, you know? You can't, you can't, you can't. Unless you're my wife. <laughs> Holy crap, you guys. She spelunked me. She went in. Oh, just hard. Put her shoulder into it. Ugh, like hot dog sized veins came out of my neck. I never knew I had. Mm. That was bad. Man. How can I punch in exactly how she did this? How can I describe it? I need to go deeper. Look. How do I drive this home? Okay, boxing, that's it, you know? You guys all know rudimentary boxing technique, I'm assuming, right? Because you're also like me from the streets. So, you know, you got your jab, you got your cross, you got your hook, right? But your uppercut, that's a fight finisher, okay? Because it's not just your shoulders and your middle, it's your ham, okay? So you want to drop, okay, and you use your legs, drop under the defenses, hook them like this, explode upward like a thrust, okay, <laughs> and send your fist through their jaw, which goes through their brain. <laughs> Knockout, right? Now imagine, instead of a fist, it's my wife's finger held high and defiant, <laughs> like a railroad spike of rage. And instead of a jaw, it's my asshole, Nashville. <laughs> She got in and under, lifted me up, clubber langed me, lifted me off the bed. Ah Blood came out of my mouth, eyeball left the socket. I don't like it. And now we know, that is not my jam. Literally. Look. 
Okay, it wasn't even that bad, if I'm honest. I'm just a bitch. <laughs> it's true. It just felt that way to me at the time. She probably barely put half a nail in there, and I'm like, no! Jumped off the bed, wrapped myself in 10 blankets, sat there. Why would you hurt me? You guys do drugs? Resounding positive, yeah. All right, let's do a quick survey. Just call out the drug you enjoy. Go ahead. Uh, Molly. Molly. Ketamine. Ketamine, night. That's a strong ketamine. You don't take enough, I think, sir. I, I love doing that. I do it for me because um, I read a book once by a defense attorney that was like, the truth just sounds different in court. In my job, I read people. I read crowds and, uh, you know, feel out the kind of material I'm going to do. I love doing the drug survey because I can tell all of you enjoy and do those drugs actively. Everyone who called them out, I can tell. Even the guy who's way too aggro. Weed! Like, <laughs> maybe too much sativa, switch, a little indica mixed in. <laughs> just an idea. And I love it, because I've had people fake it. Like, guys like, heroin! Like, not a chance in hell. You wouldn't have that much energy and you wouldn't be here. Like, no one shoots up and is like, I love to drool and laugh and piss. <laughs> Heroin's not a comedy drug, ever. But some people, man, do they do the drugs. God, where was I? I was in Arizona. And I was like, hey guys, what's your favorite? I didn't even ask, what drug do you do? I got partway through the word drug in what's your favorite drug? What's your favorite drug? And this guy goes, cocaine! Like before I finished the word drug, just pulled his gun out, shot it out of the air, spun it back in the holster. But I was playing upstate New York, playing a club, and uh, the booker, the buyer, uh, or the owner were like, hey, would you mind doing a matinee show? And I'm like, yeah, like, I don't like doing three shows in a night. Like that third show, you're like, did I do this joke already? Where am I? What's my name? <laughs> like three separate hours, you tend to lose track, you know? But um, he's like, well, it's like a favor. We have a massive senior citizen community and they just want to come to a show and they don't want to be up late. I'm like, oh yeah, let's do it. Let's see who comes. Packed house, <laughs> packed house of people, 75 and, and older. Yeah, it was, it was actually awesome. They were fun, they rolled with everything, it's great. So I was looking out at this crowd of old folks and I was like, should I do the drug survey? Everything in me screamed no. And I'm like, nope, screw that, do it. <laughs> Guys do drugs? Silence, like icy silence. Like a tumbleweed rolling in, floating on the wind, not even on the ground. And I was like, what's your favorite drug? Call it out. Nothing, a silence beyond silence. And I go, guys, um, it doesn't matter what drug. Whatever you're into, it doesn't have to be a cool drug or an illegal drug. Caffeine's a drug, alcohol's a drug, Tylenol's a drug, whatever you like. And this brave man saved my ass by going, Benadryl? <laughs> Fuck yeah, Benadryl. That's a great drug, sir. A pill that makes you not itch? Amazing. If I'm on tour with fish, I want Benadryl, right? I don't want weed. I want to not itch from all this rashes I'm getting. <laughs> I'm sleeping in this tent. Good call. I'm like anyone else. And this lady with a beehive, her hand comes up like this, just shaking. And I'm like, you have to raise your hand. What, what is your name, ma'am? She goes, Doris. And I go, Doris, what's your drug? And she goes, NyQuil. And I go, okay, Doris, let me ask you something. You ever fill it up past the line? And she goes, mm-hmm. Now we're partying, Doris. Now we're partying. Doris likes a full cup, man. <laughs> you guys are awesome. I'm gonna do one more bit for you. You guys rock. Just gonna say that. Um, thank you. It's really cool. Um, I think every guy has to have good examples growing up, you know, uh, uh, to learn what it is to be a good man. But I think we also need a few terrible examples, you know? We need to meet guys who are just like, I can never be you. Oh, man, do you suck, you know? We have to have those guys floating around. And I was on vacation with my wife in Anguilla. Uh, it's a beautiful island in the Caribbean. And I met the worst guy I've ever met. And his name was Doug. 
And that sucked because every other Doug I've ever met is super chill. Sells you weed at a discount, smokes a little with you, right? Teaches you about life. Unrattled. Doug, is anyone coming to my party? Cool, man, I'm here. They'll show up. It's me, Doug. Dougs are awesome. <laughs> but this Doug sucked. And the first night, all the new people that had just come to the resort, they're like, would you like to go on a sunset cruise? And I'm like, that sounds delightful. Turns out it's just a giant speedboat with seats, and they gave us a jug of rum runners. And it was the kind of alcoholic level rum runner where you have two sips, and you're just like, why do we worry about anything? I feel great. <laughs> why do we worry, man? Life is awesome. It's awesome. You realize how hammered you are. And then they just hit the throttle and you're just hitting every wave, like just splashing your drink all over yourself. Just like, this is the best Sunset Cruise I've ever been on in my life. Just drink all over your face and chest. And we drove out past the breakers and settled. And then we started meeting each other. We're all comfortably drunk and like, what do you do for a living? Oh, that's cool. And where are you from? And we're from all other places around the world. And then Doug starts walking around and alphaing everybody on the boat, men and women. Doug was deep into his 50s. He'd already been drinking before he got on the speedboat, so he's hammered. And he's just going up to everyone going, so what do you do for a living? And no matter what they say, he'd be like, <laughs> all right. Whatever, like it's not a real job, but not in a funny way. He like condescended to all of us. And I'm just like, oh, Doug, don't come to me. I don't even understand what I do for a living. Like, I don't even get it. So he's like, what about you, bro? Bro, he's 56. Calm down, let bro go, man. He's like, what about you, bro? I'm like, oh, I'm actually a comedian, Doug. And he's like, good luck with that. Which is how I feel every night on this stage. Moment to moment, here we go. Hope they like this joke. Good luck with that, out of the plane. No parachute. That's my job, Doug. You nailed it. And then we're all like, Doug walks away. My wife and I look at each other like, fuck this guy, you know? <laughs> then the guy at the other end of the boat recognizes me. He goes, hey, wait a minute. Hey man, are you Matt Bronger? And I'm like, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's me. And he's like, oh dude, my wife and I loved your last special. You're awesome, man. I'm like, thanks, dude, sincerely. And Doug's head just snaps. And he looks at me, because now I have value. <laughs> and he's like, I knew I knew this guy. I knew, he never knew me, never once. He's like, this guy's a fucking assassin. Fucking assassin. I knew it. You're a fucking assassin, bro. And he goes to high five me and misses, because he sees like six of me. Doug and his wife were terrible, man. We hated him. Like, at one point, Doug got a Caribbean man who worked there, working a job to loan him his do-rag. Doug put it on, started doing hip-hop poses. Did you hear every white person's butthole just pucker? Did you hear that? <laughs> like, we can't afford you, man. We gotta throw you off this boat, Doug. Cement shoe this motherfucker, you know? He's done. No more white people like you. He sucks, and him and his wife, I think the worst thing is they hate their kids. Doug's wife, one point, was like, we have three kids, ah. And my wife goes, are they here? And Doug's wife says, and I quote, fuck that, fuck no, fuck them, fuck them. Take it easy, Doug's wife, these are your children. So fast forward to a couple years later, my wife and I were in San Francisco. Now we go every year, second weekend of March, and just enjoy each other. I don't do any shows. I don't do any work at all. She doesn't do any work at all. We just hang out and we celebrate each other and we love that city and we've had great times there, you know? And every year we go, because my wife is a pirate, she always goes, let's get butt tattoos. Let's get butt tattoos. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, because I'm drunk. Halfway there in the cab, I always bitch out. I'm like, I don't wanna. And we have to turn the cab around. It's pathetic. <laughs> And we've had her ups and downs, she and I, and I felt I had to show her commitment beyond our engagement. We were engaged to be married at the time. We didn't have a kid yet. And so we sat down uh, the second night we were there. We ordered drinks. She picks hers up. I'm like, before you drink that, and I drink mine, we're getting butt tattoos tonight. <laughs> and she goes, you won't. You're going to puss out. And I'm like, mm-mm, we're doing it. She's like, well, what am I getting? OK. You're getting what you said to me when I proposed to you, when I'm on one knee. Do you remember? She goes, no. You said, shh. She shushed me. <laughs> like I'm on one knee. Like you're the greatest woman. Shh, what the fuck? This is my moment. Like she can't take a compliment. And she's like, well, what are you getting? 
I need a volunteer to come on the stage right now and read my butt tattoo to the room. You, ma'am, come on up. You right there, come on up, give her a hand. Clear a hole, clear a hole. Go right through here. Keep it going, keep it going, guys, keep it strong. Come right here, here's the stairs. Take your time, take your time. All right, what is your name, ma'am? Mona. Give it up for Mona, everybody. Thank you, Mona. Now I have permission to show you my bottom, yes? Cool, okay, take the mic. You see, she's seen them all, folks. Way to go, Mona. So just read whatever you see on my butt, okay? Okay, okay. Great. All right, let's this do this. Fucking assassin. Thank you, Mona. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Thank you very much.